In this video, we're learning about viruses. So we'll cover what viruses are, the structure of viruses, and then finally, how viruses replicate. Let's start by looking at what viruses are. We can describe viruses as microscopic infectious agents that can require the cells of living organisms in order to replicate. In order to understand this definition a little bit, Let's break it down into a few parts. Firstly, viruses being microscopic just means they're really tiny, and we can only see them with a powerful electron microscope. The term infectious describes their ability to cause disease and spread between different host organisms, and this word host just refers to the living organism that the virus replicates within. And remember here that replicate is a term we use for how the virus makes copies of itself. Then the final thing you need to understand about this definition is that we use the word agents rather than organisms when we describe viruses because they're not actually considered to be living organisms. In fact, viruses are described as acellular, meaning they're not made of cells. And because they can't replicate on their own, they need to hijack the cells of a living host instead in order to make copies of themselves. Next then, let's take a look at the structure of viruses. Viruses come in various shapes and sizes, and they're generally simpler than cells. But they have some key components that are always present. Let's take HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, as an example in order to explore these different components. First, viruses contain genetic material, which could either be DNA or RNA. And that DNA or RNA can be either single-stranded or double-stranded. For instance, this HIV virus has two single strands of RNA and they contain the instructions for making new viruses. Next, we have the capsid. This is a protein layer that protects the virus's genetic material. There are certain extra components in some viruses too. As an example, they might have an envelope, which is an outer layer of phospholipids that helps the virus enter host cells. Some can also have glycoproteins, which are sometimes called surface, attachment, or envelope proteins, and these are attached to the envelope and help the virus bind to receptors on the surface of host cells. Lastly, certain viruses carry enzymes. In our example here, that would be this reverse transcriptase, and this helps convert viral RNA into DNA once it's inside a host cell. This is useful to the HIV virus because it allows it to integrate its genetic material into the host's DNA more easily. Finally, let's cover how viruses replicate. Unlike cells, viruses don't go through cell division, but instead they rely entirely on host cells to make more virus particles. To show how this works, let's grab a host cell and go through the stages. The replication process begins when a virus attaches itself to a host cell using its attachment proteins. These proteins match up with specific receptors on the host cell's surface, and once they bind, the virus injects its genetic material into the host cell. Then once the genetic material is inside, the virus uses the host cell's enzymes and ribosomes in order to replicate its viral proteins, and as a result it creates many, many new viruses. Then finally, these new viral particles are released from the host cell and the new viruses can then go on to infect more cells and the cycle repeats. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions and past papers and we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.